In today's video, I want to show you three easy and cheap ways to heat your home in the event of an emergency winter power outage. I'm also going to show you some tricks on how you can use these devices to warm up food and have multiple uses instead of just heating. You can also do other things that make it super versatile. So with that, let's jump right into it. Today's video is brought to you by Alpine Home Air, America's number one choice for quality, affordable DIY HVAC equipment. All right, so number one on my list of emergency heating devices is the Big Buddy by Mr. Heater. This is a super versatile heater that has amazing capabilities when it comes to heating. So let's show you some of the features of this Big Buddy. All right, so this is the Big Buddy here, and I've got this running on low right now, and it is just spitting out tons of heat. So just to give you some statistics on this heater, if we run this on high, we're gonna get 19,000 BTUs of heating, which is amazing. On low, we're still gonna get 4,000 BTUs. And on high, we can run this for a total of four hours with our dual propane tanks that we'll show you in a minute and six hours on low. Now, in addition to that, what you can do is you can run this on a 20 pound tank like these ones that I've got out here. And you can run this for between 20 and 100 hours on a 20 pound cylinder, depending on what setting you have it on. If you have this set to high, which is going to light up the second burner and instantly you can feel that heat, you're gonna get 20 hours of runtime on a 20 pound cylinder. And if you have it on low, you can expect to get 81 hours. Absolutely epic. The thing is already burning me out. I'm gonna put it back on low here. Another feature is this has a tip sensor. So say this is running and someone knocks this over, You'll notice everything turns off. The pilot light, everything turns off. So a really nice safety feature. And just with that, I want to mention, make sure that you have a good carbon monoxide detector. It is safe for indoor use, by the way. Some people say it's not. It totally is. And just make sure you have a good functioning carbon monoxide detector. This is the X-Sense that I like the most. It has carbon monoxide as well as smoke and I'll make sure and leave this linked in the video description. So going over here to the side, we'll show you how easy these are to replace. So we simply pivot this up, we can spin this off and on, and it's really easy. And again, once you have that adapter hose and you can hook this up to a bigger tank, it just makes this thing last super long. Now here's something that a lot of people don't realize that Mr. Buddy is capable of. We can lift this front cover off, and then we can slide this end right here into the cover or uh, the handle rather and it fits perfectly to where we can slightly bend this and yet it's very um rigid enough to hold weight and we can heat up stuff right here because it gets really hot just for reference i have a cup of joe right here easily supports that you can put a little pot of canned soup or what have you and warm it up and you're good to go and then when we're done, simply bend it back, pop it into these little holes. You have some flexibility here, so don't worry if you bend it a little bit too much, you can bend it back and then we're good to go. Now the second emergency heater I wanna talk about in this first category is this guy right here. This is made by Vesta and it's called an Instafire. And it is really unique in that we're using canned heat down here. And what it does is it actually heats up these fins here which in turn generates heat and this motor does not require any electricity and it will blow it across these fins and it will heat a small room. This does not produce the BTUs nearly as much as the big body obviously, but this is a true like emergency. We don't have any gas, all we have is a lighter and we can heat up a room and this could save your butts. Now what's really cool about this is that once we slide this out, this whole top piece can be removed and you have a surface to cook on. Really a genius thing by the folks at Vesta. I've heated up soup and different things on here and I can testify that this works awesome. And then when you're done heating up your food, simply slide this back on and you're ready to begin heating. And obviously while you're cooking something, it's still heating that space because it's still generating heat. Tip number two involves any gas furnace or boiler or oil furnace that is 110 volts. Unfortunately, this doesn't apply for heat pumps or 220 volt furnaces. This is only for 110 volt furnaces. 
in the event that you have gas or propane, natural gas, whatever, as long as you still have that available, which is a very common thing, we lose electricity a lot and still have gas. In that event, we're gonna show you two super easy ways to get power to that gas furnace. So number one is this guy right here. This is called an easy generator switch. And normally you would have just a light switch right here when you go down to your furnace. And again, that doesn't allow you to get power to just that furnace. Now say you don't wanna spend a ton of money doing a transfer switch and a whole backup system. This allows you just to power the gas furnace with the easy generator switch. So we removed our switch that used to be here. This comes with the kit as well as this box. And we simply wire this in. It took less than 30 minutes. So now in the event of a power outage, uh, in a normal grid situation where we're running off power from the city, we would have this toggled down like this. And then if we want to run this with a generator, we'd simply toggle it over to generator, plug the female end of our extension cord in here. These will never be live, by the way. And then we would run that over to our generator and we can power our uh, furnace. Now, a question that I get asked all the time is, what happens when my thermostat doesn't have power? The reality is if your furnace gets power, whether that's backup or grid power, the thermostat will immediately have power. Or if you have a battery powered thermostat, power does not affect it. It's just sending a signal to the furnace and your thermostat will not be affected by the power outage. But if you do require power with most um, smart thermostats, you have to have a C wire to get power to it. As soon as you give power to the furnace, you'll be able to function your HVAC system or your gas furnace at least normally like you would if there wasn't a power outage. Now the easy generator switch is less than $100. It is UL listed, so it is totally um, up to code, any electrical code. But if you don't wanna spend $100 and you wanna find a cheaper route that isn't say UL listed, but is totally safe, you can go this route and you can install a plug and a pigtail that basically turns your furnace into any other appliance like your TV or your microwave oven. You simply unplug it when you wanna kill power to it. And then you can take that pigtail and you can plug it into your extension cord that goes out to your generator or your power station. So a super simple and very easy and cheap method to get power to that gas furnace. Now, let's say if you don't have a generator or a power station and you want to get power to your gas furnace or other things in your home, there is also a workaround for that that I wanna share in this video. So this involves buying an inverter, which is about, it can be 100 to $200 for this inverter, so significantly less than a generator or a power station and you can effectively turn your vehicle, any vehicle, into a generator. And then you can then plug that extension cord into your gas furnace and run it for as long as you want. You can leave it idling, you can turn it on and off periodically, that choice is up to you, but you can effectively turn your vehicle into a generator. Now I've created videos that show exactly how to do that step by step, as well as these other methods that I've shown here. So I'll make sure and leave those linked at the end of this video so that you can check those out. Well, folks, I'm a firm believer in making sure that you're prepared in the event of a power outage, especially in the winter time when things can get really dicey. So hopefully these options have helped you make an informed decision about how to get power and how to get heat into your home in the event of an emergency power outage. Now, if you wanna see how easy it is to convert your car to a generator effectively, you can find that video right there. And then I'll make sure and leave those other links in the video description that show how you can get power to your gas furnace in the event of a power outage. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.